my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and to this short video where I show you a few tweaks which I wish I had done when I originally assembled the UJK Technology Professional Writer Table. Now, when I ordered everything from Axminster to Power Tools, I was terribly excited spending so much money and I didn't realize I should have ordered a little uh, packet of screws, uh, which would have been ideal, and I now realize I should have also ordered an NVR switch. There are a couple of other little minor tweaks uh, that I want to show you as well. And so let's get cracking. Now, my very first tweak is to add this uh, NVR switch to the whole table. Now, I don't know why I didn't think about needing one of these at the very beginning. It was only after I ran the table up with the writer in for the very first time, I then realized that I was trying to bend down underneath to turn the writer on and off. And then I thought, well, this is silly. So I was then turning on and off at a wall socket. And so that really wasn't very clever at all. So I think this is essential. Now, I really recommend you get one of these from the safety point of view alone. It, now, I particularly like this one because it's got a socket at the top here, which means that your writer can be plugged in and this has its own cable and plug and therefore there's absolutely no wiring for you to do at all. And the beauty of this is, is that when you're doing a cutter change, you can then remove the plug that goes to the writer. And that really is essential when you're doing tool changes. Now there's no easy way to mount this. You can't really put it on a leg here uh, because it might get knocked. If you had it on the inside there, it's not in the handiest place to get at it. So therefore I've made up a bracket I'll just show you how this fits together. Uh, my bracket assembly goes in like so, and it's attached in three points at the top here to the frame, and there's one attachment point here, and this is the only bit of modification I've had to do to the whole assembly. I've drilled one small hole in the flange of the uh, tool storage uh, bracket here, and that is, and then allows a screw to be screwed in at the bottom. So there it is, and the NVR switch goes on like so, which means it's flush here, and there's enough room at the top to get the plug in and out. Now, there are fixing points here, here, and here. These two, which correspond to the two here and here, are unused, and therefore uh, that's quite simple and straightforward to use those. This one, which corresponds to this corner here, is one of the points where the top is screwed through the frame. And so I've had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery here, and I've created this cutout here to allow a spanner to operate like so. And at the top, the two pieces are held together with a pair of screws. I've rounded off these edges so that one doesn't have sharp edges when one's putting one's hands underneath. And it's as simple as that. And I've used dome-headed screws here, and there is plenty of room underneath the casting of the table uh, to allow for these screw heads. Well, that's it. It's in the perfect position. I've tidied the wires up, and uh, that is exactly where it should be. Good job done. Now, when I first leveled the top of the writer elevator and then did up these two screws either side, although I had these corners perfectly flush with the top of the uh, writer table, uh, when I tightened these up, then I was making the aluminium top dish slightly because I was tightening them too tight. Now, when we leveled the writer elevator in the tabletop, we used six grub screws which corresponded to three of these screws down this side and three down this side and then we adjusted everything and it was sitting nicely then when we screwed the screws in holding the plate in place there were no grub screws on this end or this end and no support arrangements here either so what i've done to stop that dishing uh, which i was getting when i was tightening these up quite a lot was to get some screws of my own and fit them in the holes which are either side of the fixing hole and I've adjusted them so they just touch the underside of the elevator plate. Now that was a little bit of a fiddle but it was well worth it because now I can really tighten uh, these screws up as much as I like. Now I had been having a little bit of trouble with the mobility wheel and I found that I was uh, pushing it down like so and the wheel was actually catching on the under edge of the 
bracket that goes across. And the reason for that was that I was pushing this down too far and making the wheel tuck under completely. So when you use the mobility wheel, uh, don't lower it down too much and you'll find it moves perfectly freely. In the instructions for the router elevator, it suggests that you put the universal plate on with some screws and it tells you the right size screws to get from the trend accessory pack which Axminster to sell and it's only a couple of pounds. Well I didn't bother with that, I thought oh dear oh dear, you know, I've got plenty of screws at home. So I used some of my own M6 screws but the heads were not very clever and as a result when I put uh, the writer into the, the setup uh, it was not quite central. And I didn't like that, so I went and got myself the trend screws. And as a result, that now is nicely centered, just as it should be. Now, a common characteristic of every writer table I've ever used is that even when the writer itself is as high as it can possibly go, when you put a cutter in, uh, you can't get the height then uh, that you need. And the danger is you might risk holding on to the cutter with too little of the shaft into the router. So I've had for a number of years these writer collet extensions and I bought them from Axminster. They must be at least 10 years old, maybe more. Uh, and I understand they still do something very similar to this, uh, perhaps a fraction shorter. Actually, that would be quite a good thing. And I've got a quarter inch and I've got a half inch. And so what I am going to do is to mount the half inch one in there permanently. And then it will also make it easier to change the tools. Because at the moment, I've got from the front where you are, uh, press the button to hold and lock the shaft of the writer from underneath, and then uh, squiggle around with the spanner. Well, that's OK. Uh, but um, I don't want to damage this rather nice uh, top of the writer lift and certainly not the, the flange which the inserts fits into. And so uh, I think uh, using one of these is a good idea. It's not to everyone's taste and some cutters don't need it. Uh, this one probably doesn't need it. This one certainly doesn't need it. Uh, but this one probably does. And my little set, which I, again I bought from Axminster, uh, this, this is probably 15 years old or more. Uh, every one of these needs that. Now, just to show that you can still take this down far enough in order to make it usable, it shows you the, the great range of height adjustment available on the writer elevator. And there it is. It's disappearing. And it's down there somewhere. So there we go. That will work. Now you do need to check that your mitre fence is running uh, parallel uh, to the uh, professional fence. And the way to do that is to set the professional fence up on its zero marks, uh, which we have saw in the setup video, and then clamp it in place. And they should be on zero and zero on the scales, because you set that up before. Then take a square. And with your mitre fence, I've, I'm using the professional one, put your square up against the fence and up against this fence here, and you need to make sure that they are absolutely at right angles. If they're not, proceed as follows. There are two screws at the back of the mitre fence. Undo those. And release the locking knob here. This allows the mitre fence to be adjusted. Move it into the correct position so it's at right angles, and then tighten the locking knob. Then move the little pointer so it's pointing the, to the zero degree mark, and when it's there, tighten up the two screws. If you have the basic mitre fence, all you do to adjust it is loosen the clamping knob, get everything set up and square, tighten the clamping knob, and then undo this screw here, and adjust the pointer so it then points at the 90 degree mark. Well, I'm pretty happy with those tweaks. Uh, now, watch the review. Thanks very much for watching. 
Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>